Hi guys, this current challenge is called delete a node. The instructions say delete the node at a given position and return the head node. So if we receive a position of zero, it means that we need to delete the head of the linked list. And if we receive a position of one, it means that we need to delete the node that comes right after the head. A position of two means that we need to delete the node that comes after that and so on. So it's possible that after we delete a node, our list is going to be empty, in which case we are going to delete the heads and then we won't be left with any nodes. So what you see here on the right is my solution. So this is the function, it's called delete nodes, and it takes in two parameters. The first one is a node pointer to the head of the list, and the second parameter is the position at which we need to delete the nodes. So if we receive a position that is equal to zero, it means that we need to delete the heads, in which case I could go ahead and simply use the delete keyword to remove the head. But if I do that, I might not be able to return a pointer here. So because this function expects us to return a node pointer, what I'm doing is I'm getting the next value from the head, and then I'm returning that after I delete my head. You can do this differently, but that's just the way I'm doing it. If we're not asked to delete the head, that means that the position value is going to be greater than zero, then I can simply have a temporary variable or a temporary node pointer that also points to the head of my list. And then I'm going to have another node pointer that is going to be in charge of storing the previous nodes. And that is important because we are going to be looping in a moment. So just to clarify, when you see temp and then priv, you can think of something like this. We're going to have the previous nodes, the temp node. So as we loop through, we'll be at the temp node, but we'll also have the information for the previous node. And to access the next node, we could always do temp.next or in our case, we'll be doing temp.next like this because temp would be a pointer. But you get the idea. At every iteration, we'll be able to know what was the previous node and what is the next node. So this is what I'm doing. Once my temp variable is not pointing to a null pointer, I can enter my loop. And if I've reached my position already, then I can exit my loop. Otherwise, I can store my current node value or my current node pointer inside of prev so that prev will point to temp. And then I can move my temp pointer one node ahead and I can also increase my position. Now, once I reach my position at which I need to delete the nodes, I will exit this for loop and I will reach here. And then I will say the next pointer of my previous nodes should point to the next pointer of my temp node. I have this very small illustration, which looks a bit weird, but you get the idea. Let's say that this is our first pointer here. So this would be prev and this is temp.next. When we got out of our for loop, temp had a value already, but we need to delete temp. If I delete my temp node right here, our list is going to get broken because priv and temp.next are not going to be connected. What I could do is first establish a connection between priv and temp.next so that whenever I delete my temp nodes, my nodes will still be connected, but the temp node will disappear. So that's what is happening here. I'm establishing the connection between the priv nodes and the temp.next nodes. So once that is done, I can simply delete my temp nodes. And of course I need to return the head because I need to return the head of my linked list, whatever that was. And that's it for the code of this solution. Let's run it. We've passed sample test case zero and also sample test case one. Now it's time to submit it. And we've passed all the test cases. So let's look at the changes necessary in C code or in C language. Everything is pretty much the same thing, but instead of using the delete keyword in C, we can go ahead and use the free keyword. You can also use that in C++, but I just wanted to switch things up just for information. So I'm using this free keyword here, and I also have the free keyword when I'm deleting my temp nodes. And one other change is I'm using this null keyword with uppercase letters instead of using the null PTR keyword in C++. You can pause this video and look at this code if you want, maybe copy it and play around with it. But otherwise, let me run this code. It also passes the sample test cases. So I'm going to make one last submission for this tutorial and that's it. So thank you guys for watching this video. If you liked it, please make sure you subscribe to my channel, turn on your notifications and I'll catch you next time.